I agree with everything they said. <laughs> because they are very well thought ideas, which actually can lead to peace. Except that we have to clarify some of the points they have raised up, in my point of view. Leadership, yes, we need very strong leaders who can make decisions. But don't judge the leaders at any particular stage because when they judged Harry S. Truman to be weak, he made very important decisions in the history of mankind. Because the position they are sitting in, the seat they are sit on have electricity, and it has the tendency to transform personalities and to transform uh, uh, decision making. Uh, for me, the decisions they have to make are very, very crucial. They are bitter pills. But we are told in political science that leaders lead. And when they lead, they cannot afford to put their finger up every morning to see how the wind is blowing in order to make decisions. They have to make decisions for the national interest of their people. I think that the decision which needs to be made on the Palestinian side and on the Israeli side, okay, we know what needs to be done, how can we do it? Because it is my point of view that the plan for the peace is already carved out. Everybody knows the price, but I think they are haggling over the price. There are very, very few things we don't know about the peace process. Your parents, your children, on the Palestinian side, on the Israeli side, even the kids in Timbuktu now know what needs to be done in order to have peace. To have peace, we have to have goodwill. We have to sit on the table and decide we will not get out of this room till we have peace. In this, with this attitude, which in negotiations they call goodwill, both know that they have to sacrifice certain things. But they have to look for the future, the future of their children and the future of their grandchildren. Because for the Israelis, they cannot live looking over their shoulder. So there are security measures which the Palestinians have to come up with to assure the Israelis of security. The Palestinians cannot live forever under occupation. And there are measures of goodwill the Israelis can do in order to assure the uh, Palestinians that it's not a matter of usurping the land nor grabbing more and more, which actually dominated the paradigm for peace after the 1995-96. Uh, everybody started to think on both sides of the leadership. Now we have positions, how can we improve them? I think when you start to think what's mine is mine and let's negotiate about what's yours, this is where the negotiations begin to be non-starters. Both were talking past each other, not to each other. Each was trying to score points. This is not what the negotiations for peace is all about. We are talking about people who lose their children, their sons, their daughters. We are talking about people who lose very dear ones from the fam their families. And this is what should make us think in terms of the future. It is so imperative for us to coexist, to change the culture of war to the culture of peace. We cannot keep talking about the Israelis talk about Judea and Samaria as part of Israel, Jerusalem, non-dividable, non united, and the Palestinians keep thinking, okay, they say this, we can talk about Tel Aviv, Haifa, the right of return, uh, and the refugee problems. These are non-starters. If, if you really want to achieve peace, you start with... Star with issues which can be solved to show people goodwill, to show people that you have to achieve peace, you have made up the make up your mind, you have taken the decision to make peace, and this is where you are heading for. You cannot say what you don't mean. 
Most of the people of bo on both sides believe that neither side now, neither uh, government is interested in peace. And you've heard about this from my learned friends and colleagues. The problem is, how can we assure everybody now that our leadership can respond to the needs of the people who want peace? Thank you very much.